Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our podcast, We Are All Set. My name is Caleb Martinez. To the right of me is Free. It's your boy Free. You already know what it is. What's and to the left of me is Rich. I'm in a building. You already know. Talk nice, man. We're here. It's episode 12. We're about to get straight into it. No bullshit. First and foremost, let's go into rapper Nipsey Hussle was murdered in the streets of Crenshaw. Um, March 31st, 2019, he was 33 years old. He was shot six times in his head, chest, and torso. Um, he was pronounced dead a little later at the hospital. He was murdered outside of his clothing store in Hyde Park. Very motherfucking unfortunate. Let's get some words on it. Free, how you feel? I'm just really disgusted overall. First of all, Nipsey was one of the few smart rappers. I'm not gonna say, I'm, I, let me take that back. I just like the message that he was promoting. He was talking about investing in his community. He was actually doing the investing in his community. You know what I'm saying? He was talking about owning his own label, mailbox money, passive income, crypto. He was a forward thinker. He has programs and scholarships set up for the youth around his neighborhood. Just an all around solid dude, husband, father, you know what I mean? Family member. It's just disgusting. I mean, we still don't really know what happened or how it happened, but from what I can tell, it just seemed like a sucker nigga hater. We kind of know what happened, though. Yeah. Speak, on what you, speak on what you heard. We don't know if this is true. We were, nobody was there. But let's talk about what we think could have happened. What's the story that's going around? I mean, I mean, people are hearing, you know, some dude came out that he came, he approached Nipsey. Some words were exchanged because I guess Nipsey didn't want him around. For whatever reason, dude double back and shot him. And for that reason, and he didn't have his friends didn't have any guns on him because I guess they employed fellas. So all of those reasons above is the reason why Nipsey's not here. I don't really know the I don't really know the specifics. I just know that it's an unfortunate situation and I'm just disgusted by the whole thing. Okay, well let me say this. I don't know the specifics and I was not there, but the story that I heard, you know, via the streets was some shit more more so like this, and let's be all the way clear, you know. Okay. I'm a Nipsey fan first and foremost. I fuck with him, love his music, respect him as an artist. But the story that I heard was the nigga who did it, him and Nipsey had a situation going on, and Nipsey tried to cut him off from getting money around them or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the nigga felt like I guess they were saying he was a rat, a situation where he snitched on somebody. So it was something about well, bring that paperwork to prove that you didn't snitch or stay the fuck from around here. So the nigga felt like he was disrespected and he came back and he backed out on him. And I and I, that's what that's what I heard. I heard it alone and then free is that what you heard? I heard that. And we heard that from two separate ways, so I'm gonna just say that's kinda what's going around. And with that being said, does that make a difference on the situation? No, it doesn't. And honestly, how I feel about the whole situation. It's really fuck the hood, cause shit like that. You can when you're in a situation when you at a platform like Nipsey's at and you high up. It's just too many. You can't lights. get touched. Nah, you can't get touched in the hood. You know what I mean? It's unfortunate. And when I say fuck the hood, I don't mean fuck the good people in the hood. But there's a lot of low lives, and it's easy to say like when you come from the same neighborhood as somebody, and one of y'all makes it in the other, and you don't make it, and you feel like a sense of failure. Like that envy, you automatically get that envy built up. Maybe that was what was in the killer. I don't know, but that envy is true. But let me just say this: I feel like if we take, if we stop for a minute and take Nipsey off of the platform of who he is, his plateau, and say he's Nipsey Hustle, let's talk about two real niggas in the street. If a grown ass man looks at another grown ass man and say you can't get money on this block, nigga, and so now his family's not eating, nobody's confused on why he would pull up and, and and back out on him. Nobody's confused by that. So I feel like us as fans, we look at it and say. Why Nipsey? But the reality is when that shit is going on in the street, we're all equal. We all grown men at the end of the day before who gives a fuck about rappers and sales and whether you look out for your community. Nobody cares about that. We're grown men with strong egos. And when that man decided to blast on him, it was because of something that he did and they had real friction. And if it was anybody else, nobody would be so offended. Niggas would respect the streets. But now because it's Nipsey and we all of a sudden love Nipsey so ridiculous, but I'm not going to get into that. Now, niggas think that it's so absurd, but to me, I feel like when you have a family and you have a, a platform and you're in a whole other bracket, join that bracket. The more you come back to the streets, the more the streets gonna have you. So you're saying? So I'm not. I just to streets. me, I'm I'm sad that it happened. I lost brothers, cousins, family members. But when you decide to be a part of that street, that shit you gotta swallow. So to me, I say rest in peace, Nipsey. But that is how the fucking game goes. Rich, how do you feel about the Nipsey situation? Damn, that was kind of cold blooded. Yeah, was, oh, was damn. damn, ice, ice cold baby uh, Kayla. Got I'm damn. from some different shit. Like it hurt me, but I've been hurt plenty of times I before. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it's fucked up. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you don't want nobody to die. And the fact he was 
doing things for his community and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? He he was a deep person and all that, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he did have a gangster side. He did have a street tie. He did have things going on. You don't know what him and that man had going on. At the end of the day, if the man was a rat or not, if if he took if Nip took it on himself to thug the nigga off the block, rough to tell the nigga he can't come around no more, then he should be prepared for the what what comes with that, like a, t a telling niggas they can't eat or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever was going on. You know what I'm saying? When you when you take them positions as somebody big as the big bro, big homie around here, you laying down the law and you telling niggas this and that, like you know, it's, you leave yourself open for the chance that somebody might want to retaliate. You know what I'm saying? I say I say this, you know, like. Niggas get niggas with families and shit get shot all the fucking time, get killed all the fucking time, and don't really nobody give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So like, just cause this nigga's famous, don't all of a sudden act like this is just some whole brand new shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, if you really, if you really, if you really so heartbroken by this man getting body, stop saluting the shooter. Like, stop cosigning, stop, stop cosigning music that that promotes getting. People dying, stop promoting negativity, and then be so shocked when a nigga gets shot. Thank At you. the same time, Nip Nip did a lot of great things. Stem stem cell, stem, stem education for the kids, Absolutely. real estate, all the lessons he taught, and all the positivity. But at the same time, Nip killed a lot of niggas on the, on the records. You know what I'm saying? Like like the the real. shit that we promote is the same shit that's killing us. And we and we give it to the kids, we give it to the youth, and they grow on the negativity. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you really want anything to stop change, or if you really so heartbroken about niggas with families getting their head blown off, then niggas need to stop ingesting negativity. Niggas need to stop co-signing people creating negativity and just make it an all-around hub fest around this motherfucker. That's the only way you're gonna stop it. That's Other it. than that, we just gonna have to deal with the bullshit that goes on in this life. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, niggas not gonna true. stop having static, and niggas not gonna stop. Killing each other because that's just what's what's going on. Like that's just what's celebrated. The thug shit is celebrated. The killing each other is celebrated. Niggas not niggas not doing enough to talk down on disrespect niggas that's killing. Niggas not saying like, oh you you killed the nigga. You a cornball. That's whack for that. You whack for that. Niggas no, like, yo, no, oh, he busts his gun. He's the loudest nigga in the world. They niggas bigging that shit up. And can I say something though? It's funny because you have people who listen to rap music and you have people who are really from the fucking streets. And it irritates me that niggas want to be like, blue face baby, but they don't understand what the fuck that means. That means I'm a crip nigga and I bang crip. So when a crip nigga gets shot, everyone's like, nigga, I did. What the fuck do you mean? Where was y'all at when y'all was screaming blue face baby in the show? Y'all don't know what the fuck y'all talk about. Yeah. But then when street shit's put in front of y'all for the first time, then that niggas act like, I just cannot believe they're shooting in the hood. The yeah. fuck you mean niggas been dying in the hood? Yeah. So it is what the fuck it is. Where was y'all at when Peanut got shot? All the little hood niggas that we grew up with. Y'all didn't give a fuck then, but now people are like, oh my God, because y'all industry people, y'all don't realize real shit happens in the hood. I'm just... I hear it is what I'm really just upset right. that his people ain't have no guns. Like, why? And I'm not, it's not to nip because I respect him and I love him as an artist. It's to the people who are like dragging that. it, but I feel like keep that energy year round when these young boys are dying every fucking day. I it shouldn't take I, Nipsey to die for niggas to now feel like no more gang shit. Where the fuck was y'all at that when my cousins were getting shot? Fuck out of here. It's not so much that. It's just another nigga getting shot. I think that it's the fact that he was actively doing positive things in the community. Yeah. A lot of niggas do get shot that might have a daughter or two, but they not really buying back the block. They not. Well, I mean, he, he, yeah, he, he, just just so the, he just so happened to have the. He just so happened to have the money. Niggas is really. Just a lot of niggas do that. He just so happened to have the money to make a change to, to, to so influence people. Say a lot he was doing. Like, everybody's running around doing what he's doing. A lot of niggas do that. Really? No, a lot. Of no, no, no. Just freestyling. A lot of niggas. A lot of niggas not opening up stores and they. Niggas not open up stores. Niggas not employing. Niggas not. I'm not taking it from him. I'm just saying a lot of niggas from the. What's the okay? What's the movie? Remember that movie, Remember that movie, The Bronx Tale, when Sunny got killed, and when Sunny backed down on Sunny, and Sunny used to look look out for the 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 neighborhood. But he was representation of a lot of shit that goes on in New York. A lot of the niggas with the mob still always look out for people. They look out for children. Look out for children. It's a real nigga thing. Let's be clear. All real it's niggas. Just, it's a total difference between a couple handouts and establishing a real generation. I'm not taking anything from him, but I'm saying a lot of niggas do that. Nah, it's the difference between being a nigga with money and just giving people handouts and actually employing people and setting up shit that's generational. Like, that nigga was setting up systemic How many times you go to a bar? And they don't say the homeless men come in and sweep. That happens everywhere in the hood. 
Come on, it's little things like that that everybody everybody has a heart. Everybody looks out, including Nip, including other niggas. Everybody yeah, dying. I'm saying Nip the only nigga that ever look out. I never said that. Yeah, no, I didn't. No, we're not going out. I don't know why y'all trying to act like I'm. But you really better like to like get the nigga sweeping up the barbershop, like yeah, like it's it's bigger than no, that. I'm saying, no, I'm saying that those things happen all the time. He vamping like. Damn, I don't know. Doing after school. Not, not on that scale. Not on that scale. Not on that scale. I don't know. I don't agree. I don't agree. He's doing, 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 doing deals with the city of LA. Like, you to short you doing I'm not shortchanging him. That's how I'm talking Okay, that's how it's supposed to go. I apologize. She's that's shortchanging him. And Mark, do you feel like that's what I'm saying? Like, you feel like I'm trying to shortchange him? I'm going to set up Kayla like I'm not. Wait, wait, wait. I want to know. Do you think, do you feel like that's what I'm doing? Or you see what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm saying. I see what you're saying, but I also see what they're saying. Okay, so I'm just saying it happens. What kind of middle of the road answer was that? It happens a lot. I just want everyone to pay attention when it happens all the time. And it's, I don't want people to feel shocked by it happening by Nipsey because there are niggas in the block that come up and take care of us. I know that. I was a little kid. I remember the niggas used to give us $10 that's all the time. That's not shit. We're not talking about. Why are they not shit? Because they not Nipsey? That's not. Fuck out of here. That's not right. Nipsey. But we're nigga giving kids $10. dollars we are talking about major I'm shit. I'm not saying. You, I, and I'm sure they did major shit. When I was a kid, I don't know what they were doing. But I'm telling you, it happens every they day. They set up All I'm saying yeah, like, is. Yeah, like, what is that? Oh, my God. So he's the only nigga that did that. Nipsey's the only nigga in the world that did that. He's one of the few okay. that I know of. I digress. I'm not going to go back and forth with you because I know what the fuck Where? Where? Where are they? Pull it up. I just named one program that I don't know. What From the know? Charlotte, Massachusetts project that you know that was a street nigga that started. So you can't even tell me all these niggas get money and nobody do shit for their fucking hood. They give out your dollars. They give out your dollars. Yes, they give out your dollars. Yes, they give out your dollars. See, we're not supposed to be killing. All right, we back. Shit got a little crazy. Since we took a quick intermission, I just want to shout out Men Live, Women Live Numbers, dog, Black Owned Business. Just do me the sweatshirt, you know, because I'm mostly. I did the feats with them regular. If you, yeah. Well, That's while we're sure. at it, thank you, DGK. DGK always keeps me super fucking. Are they black owned too? Absolutely. Stevie Williams. Uh, I'm deep. This nigga's getting on my nerve. First of all, we had to um, take a minute, come back, and regroup as a family. She's bugging the fuck out. He's getting on my was, fucking nerves. She's front on Nipsey, and I'm going to say that. That's you're moving right along, so relax. Oh, wow. Because he's about to hurt my shit, home? and I'm trying to keep it cute for the camera. Because I just got my hair done today, hair by hair ink. Relax. Let's keep everything all the way adorable. Moving right along. Oh moving What's right along topic? to the next topic. We're going to get into the movie Us. Us. I hope you guys went to go see it on the first week out. When black people make movies, you're supposed to go see them on the first weekend that it comes because that's the most imperative moment so that it can make an impact in the box office. But if you didn't, that's all right. Um, the movie was directed by Jordan Peele, who was one of the most influential directors of our time, especially black for us man. as black people. Black king. Um, definitely a black king. And um, let's get into it. We watched it, we guys. We went together. And let's get into it. Free. What are your? Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna end off because I know I've already like checked in with um, the director, and I know all of the like cheat codes. So first, we're gonna ask the boys what they think, and then we'll get into the truth, and then we'll compare and contrast. Go ahead. I enjoyed the movie. I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit scarier, but I'm not mad at it. It was entertaining, comical at times. I give it a 3.8 out of 5 world sets. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> out of 5 world sets? I like that. So, um, overall, yeah, 3.7 out of 5. It was a good movie. The acting was great. Oh, oh what? Alright, well for anybody who doesn't know what the movie was about, let me get into it. It was about a family of four, and they were confronted and attacked by their doppelgangers. So when they looked up, they saw an exact reflection of them. A doppelganger is a person who looks identical to you that lives amongst us. Um, they were attacked by them, and the story was about them fighting back and, like, um, and discovering new things about themselves and about society, because they soon found out that everyone in the whole world was also being confronted, and not just the family that we were focused on. So anyways, long story short, the movie was 
let's be clear. Let's just be all the fucking real. The storyline for the scary movie was whack. We got it. We know it felt weird. If it felt weird to you, you just had like a shallow level of Were you scared? Of Were there any scary parts? It wasn't really, it wasn't so scary. It was like a thriller. It was a few things that made you go, oh shit. Like I was a little, I'm a girl, so I'd be mad scared of nothing. But it was way, it was a, so many, um, so much like, so many deeper rooted um, like hints, like so many things that were like, oh, I see what he's trying to do there. And so really, it's not about the scariness. It's about us touching on things that we noticed in the film that were way deeper rooted than what it was. So not superficially, but deeply. What did we notice in the um, film? Rich, go ahead. Um, I mean, the movie was cool. I mean, I really, I focused the movie just on the strength. It was black people. Black people did it, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna be real. If it wasn't black, it probably would've been trash. We don't keep it. So I'm gonna keep it no cold. Shit. If it wasn't a black movie and black, I wouldn't have, like. I wouldn't have gave a fuck about it. I'm gonna be real. You know what I'm saying? I, I I personally was offended of the emasculation of the black man all throughout the movie. The yeah. main the main character. The, I mean, not the main. Well, clearly he wasn't the main character. The husband of the main character. Woo! Was a, was a sucker. He said a lot and without saying a lot. The husband of the main character. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't like like. Like I'm all good with the strong black woman, but why? Like I don't have to be sus for you to be strong. Like you like, talking about in the movie when, they, when she said she's calling the shots, she's making the decisions. Yeah, because he was a sucker. He was a sucker. He was going out bad. She told that nigga, "Look, fam, you're a dub. I'm calling. I, you clearly don't run shit. I run shit. That was crazy. But it was, what, it was what had been going on the entire movie. It just the first time she actually vocalized it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? it was a moment. Yeah, the camera zoomed in on her face yeah. and she said. You don't run this yeah. shit no more. I got this and, now. And also, it was very fucking also, I think, let me ask you, let me stop you. Do you think that's a bigger reflection on just the whole energy of society with the Me Too movement? I mean, and like he's the, trying to cap he's capitalize. He's good trying to capitalize on the whole Me Too women's empowerment movement. So he said, like, "Fuck, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give them what they're looking for. Super strong woman vibes. Bitches run the world. Keep it going. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, hey, it is what it is. I just feel like." You can you can empower women without downing men. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. It's hard though. But let me tell you something, and, and this is gonna be touchy. I'm not a feminist. I'm against that shit. I think it's I think it's corny. Okay. I'm gonna say that again, and I don't say a lot of shit on here. Let me be clear. A lot of things that we talk about on the podcast, we send this to a producer and he okays things that we say. Some things I say be out of pocket. I don't give a fuck. I'm saying this shit dead in the camera. I don't give a fuck about that feminist bullshit. I'm not here for it. And I'm a woman and I'm a grown ass fucking woman, but I'm not here for that shit. So, I thought that part was corny, but I know what they were trying to do, and you gotta respect anybody who feels strongly about something, you respect it. There was a moment, okay, the whole movie, the father was a goof. Like, he was a clown, and he kept on being like, I don't know what to do. And it got on everybody's nerves, and that's cool. They wanted to portray him as being ignorant, which one thing about it, don't call my black man ignorant. That shit pisses yeah, me he, he off. Like the Howard though, okay. Hello. You know what I'm saying? And that shit kind of blew me. Never, a nigga in the Morehouse shirt would never went out like that. That shit kind of blew me. But then she came back like, I don't, you don't run the show no more. I got this. And the whole audience was supposed to be like, oh my yeah. god, a black woman. Corny. But it was one of the things that I felt like they tried to touch on, amongst other things. Free, did you yeah, notice anything? I felt like he should have, he should have, um, like, why do I have to, like, Dig so deep into this fucking movie to figure it out. Why I gotta watch videos That's on what YouTube it was about. after the That's fact? That's what it was about. The, like, and, and can you explain the movie a little better? Like, what the fuck? What did the double gang was represent to you? I'm a, the tether. Is that the hood? To that me. The, yeah, they're supposed to be poor people. people. Yeah. They're supposed to be poor people. Now, was it more so class? Classes. Was, okay, it was classes. But when I first yeah. watched it, I'm gonna mirror what I first thought. I thought it was black people versus white America. Mm -hmm. So there was a key part when, and if, if you see the movie, I want you to remember this part, when they're fighting off the white family. So you're looking at the two black kids oh, fighting yeah. off the white family. Like the and she went up, the, the, they, they had like the gangster music playing in the back. Mm -hmm. Weird. But anyways, the, girl, the little girl, she had a bat in her hand. Her brother had a mask on. And she said, we ain't fucking running no more. Like, we ain't scared no more. And they ran down on the white people and dragged them. And they were the monsters. So I felt like it was like the uplift of the black people coming for white America like we're not afraid and they had fucking Ice Cube or some shit playing yeah, in the back the fuck the police then NWA is what you playing in the back and I was like okay I see, I see where he was going with that I thought it was black people versus white America but come to find out Jordan Peele said what he was really going for was he was inspired by something that's called Hands Across America. So Hands Across America was back in the 1986 there was a charity event and it was about um, all of America uniting as one. So it doesn't matter what race, what age, anything, we all come together. So there was an event where everyone held hands from 
the bottom of Texas to the top all the way to Canada and they held hands together for 15 minutes and that was like a the America United let me get, pause you real quick the movie is entitled us that's us so he was very clear that he's talking about the United States of America that wasn't a question so like I said back to the charity event they were all holding hands and that was a thing Jordan Peele said the movie was inspired because he watched a clip of that commercial and it made him feel uncomfortable he said it almost felt like they were fucking with us like a black man holds a white woman and, da -da -da. and he said it felt weird so he said what if what they're trying to give us is bullshit and it's really sick and that's how he ended up twisting it and that's how he turned into it so let's talk about some small things that he reached into um, if you guys notice, Jeremiah 1111 was really put all throughout the movie. It was written on people's foreheads, it was written on jackets, it was all throughout the movie. And I'm going to read Jeremiah 1111 to you because this is the, the, the foundation of the film. It's about God's revenge on the covenants, okay? I will bring them a disaster in which they cannot escape, for I will not hear them in the time they cry out to me. So it means when you go against what I have, what God has planned for us, when you go against that, I'm not going to fucking save you. I felt like that's kind of fucking touchy. Like, I don't know what he's really trying to say because I do think that he's a creative mind. He's a writer, so he's very creative. But I felt like that was just really fucking touchy. Like, he feels like we, we keep on bullshitting around and when it comes down to it, God is not going to save us, period. Um, on a lighter note, he reached into things, well, uh, as far as the class system, which is what you guys said earlier, he talked about um, don't demonize them. Now, we're talking about, when I say them, we're talking about poor people versus rich people. Um, there's a separation, which was the people who live below versus the people who lived up high. Don't demonize them or point fingers. The people on the losing side, poor people, um, are coming back to claim what's theirs. So he's telling all the rich people, I'm going to say Republicans, I don't know, watch out because when, they, when these niggas come for you, they're really going to fucking win. Which, that was respectable. On a lighter note, he referenced um, uh, Michael Jackson. Everyone had on the left, the, the left glove. Um, the girl had on a Thriller shirt. That was his like tribute to Michael Jackson. That was that was cool. Um, each member of the tethered. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think that's really it with Michael Jackson. But he tried to reach out to a lot of like um, icons and things like that. And all those things were smaller. But as far as like the bigger picture, I think that was it. And I think it was creative. And I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it was just it was, a whole thing about it was you know a lot what I mean? people, puzzling. The, the main the main shit was just about people that have looking down and dehumanizing people that don't have and that like people not walking in God's path, so therefore they leave they liable to God's revenge. So like that was the whole Jeremiah eleven eleven situation, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Like, but yeah, that was basically that. Like in the, like when the lady asked, like, who the fuck is y'all? And she said, We Americans, you feel me? Like we, yeah. we are Americans. Yeah, like we, That's how she said it. I can just for, like rich, for, rich, <laughs> for rich people, I think that, for right? rich people that wear bread that be in nice community and shit, when they see niggas, they be like, "Yeah, what the fuck is y'all niggas?" They, that's how. That's the same vibes. Like, whoa, who's these poor people? What? Ew. Like, that's the same energy they got yeah. for, for poor people. That like, is. I don't. I, like, I like we 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 all. Get out of dollar. We not considered rich people, but we all have made money to live in areas and neighborhoods that are better than average black people live. And then we would still see people that don't belong in the neighborhood and be like, "Yo, who the fuck is them?" Ugh. Yeah. We do that. Everybody does that shit. Like, but it's not right. Is you know Jordan Peele a genius? No. You just nobody. Name. You guys are impressed. I mean, I'm not ready to put him up there with like Spike Lee. Like, the you're comparing him to Spike Lee. Let me say something. That's disrespectful. I'm not a fan of Spike Lee. Super disrespectful. Yeah. No, no, I'm no, not a fan of Spike Lee. All right, why is y'all? Spike Lee's level, I, I'm into directing. That's my thing. I, I'm really intuitive with that shit. And when it comes to him, he does this. He has this one little signature move where he comes in and does some tricky shit, and that's cool. But other than that, I don't. I don't really. I mean, I like him. I respect him as a black man, especially because he went to AUC. Oh. But outside of that, if I had to go with a creative mind with a G, if I had to call somebody a genius, I would go Jordan Peele or Spike Lee. Are you I think. Drunk? No, I'm not fucking drunk. I'm here. You forgot school days. You forgot. Black I didn't forget guys. shit. I don't. I'm not a fan. Man, I like what Jordan Peele is doing. I'm not ready to call him a genius so after two movies. I mean, yeah, like, Rockers, genius is not. Like, like, I, I appreciate the fact he's black, though. He got game. Inside, man, he got game. Clock school, school days. School days. Ah, uh, okay, I can be fair. I, I can do this shit all night. No, like, you can't do it all night. Don't drag it, but you said three but songs. You mean, girl six? Let's what you mean? Okay, let's talk. Okay, now let's go. Okay, now, since y'all want to go there, let's go there. Talk about Spike Lee. Like Give six. me his, what's his mastermind? Because y'all want to call him a genius you know, over Jordan Peele. Why is he a good director to you? Let's talk about five movies.
movie. What do you mean by black movies? A lot of niggas got fire movies. So why? Because he's black. You, right, first of all, I don't even like how you shortchanged the cinematography. He was like, oh, he got that one little move. He, he got that move where, where he's behind somebody and it's like the camera's moving behind him, following him up the block. That shit's fire. Like, don't do that. Freddie started that. I'm not going to shortchange. You shortchanged Nipsey. You shortchanged Spike. I'm sorry, is this the Spanish shit? Yeah. You know, Spanish niggas don't like black people anyway. That niggas racist. Don't I got like Spanish friends. I have Spanish friends. <laughs> Y'all niggas don't like Morenos. I'm the high geek when it's behind yeah, closed doors. Like I love Morenos. You are wrong. I can't believe you were saying you fronted on Nipsey today. You fronted on I Spike. I did not front on you Nipsey. On Stop, don't do that. You just fronted on Spike. You I said, love Nipsey Hussle. I'm not a fan of Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Eggplant, but they call the niggas that? What's that shit? I don't know. But y'all you know, you know, know. I, I love Nipsey. Negros? I never fronted on him. Nah, it's not Negro. I don't like, I'm not a fan of Spike Lee. I, cannot, I don't think he's everybody. And how dare you say Jordan But don't ever put Nipsey Hussle on Nipsey in the same pile. Jordan Pillow Spike Lee. Yeah, you're drunk. Millennial, my nigga, I could have that. Fuck, even fucking was a millennial. Everybody relax. A, a fucking a, a everybody chill. Movie? No, you're out of line. You're out of fucking order. You're out of order. You're out of order. Cause the next. What's the, the next, next topic? topic? This is about some jokes. The next topic is actually one that I'm really excited to talk about. I'm excited. We have a clip that we're about to show you of the rapper Cardi B, and she made a very touchy comment talking about she has robbed the nigga in the past when she lived her past life. When she wasn't herself that she is today. So here's the clip. I want to go straight. I want to go. Oh yeah, you wanna fuck me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to this hotel. And I drop niggas up and I rob them. That's what I used to do. Nothing was my And I'm gonna let Rich say how he feels about it first. About Cardi's situation, I mean, ah uh, shit. I mean, she's not right, of course, you know what I mean? But, like, niggas gotta watch for the jokes. Everybody know that game. Like, yo, if you wanna go home with random strippers, bro, then you need to know that, you're, that you need to be having your jeans close by. Like, don't just be throwing your jeans across the room. Don't, don't. Man, she definitely not supposed to be spending the night, fams. You know what I'm saying? And don't be drinking no drink prepared by that bitch. You know what I mean? Like, Get the cups from the waitress, bartender, or whatever, and drink them shits. Be don't walk away from your drink, none of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all was doing at night with these broads, but like when you meeting new broads and you taking them home and all that, like all that, and she's not even supposed to have the opportunity to catch you. And too many guys is getting caught slipping. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cardi just doing what these broads is doing, cause y'all niggas out here getting got for all y'all chicken. I know I know a couple of you guys over the name y'all niggas, man. Y'all niggas is He's right. suing her. So the niggas coming out saying he was he had a Me Too movement. He's like, she got I me. Mean, get a bag. I need to take her to court and she needs to go down and she needs to pay me a lot of money for this. I mean Free, what do you think about the nigga actually like coming for her? Well let me before I even get into the nigga, let me just say this. I'm not mad at Cardi B. I mean that's regular hood shit. You know what I'm saying? She was a stripper, she get money. Niggas get drunk, she got off for their bread. What I will say is, there's a dumb, unfair double standard because if a nigga was to come out and say something, anything remotely parallel yeah. to that about drug niggas and taking advantage, yeah. it'd be all hellfire and brimstone. Yeah. Niggas be losing endorsements, it'd be a lot of, lot of, lot of shit going around. They be boy You know what I mean? Yeah, Ross lost his shit, but he said a little oh, something. Oh, so there's a rap. double standard for people. It's definitely a double standard. It's yeah. like, oh, Cardi did it, fuck it. Like, That's not fair. It's not fair. And it's, it's, it's not fair, but at the same time, it's reality. It happens. I'm not really tripping. As far as a nigga suing, yeah, get your money. You see what you yeah, do. Shit. The way she got her money and body, you nigga get her money. Get your money and body. Oh, fuck it. Is it my turn? Do your thing, nigga. Man, you like Let me rap. tell you something. Rap. And I'm going to be very fucking real with y'all. I am a rat. I'm a Puerto Rican rat. I'm from the fucking hood and I done been broke. I ain't never ran no nigga for no fucking money. Got and any me. bitch that does that shit, you a clown ass, weak ass bitch, and I don't fucking respect you. So don't sit here and talk about, all a bitch really need is money. Bitch, I don't do that shit to no nigga for no fucking money. I never pilled a nigga and ran through his fucking pants because I'm not no rat like that. And I think that shit was corny. I think it was fucking bogus. And I think anybody who thinks that that shit's okay, it makes you fucking sick. It's not funny. It's not how the game is played. It's niggas out here that get money and they fuck with a bitch. He fronts you. You're a prostitute bitch and he pays you. The fact that you want to drug him, run down on him, is corny. Any bitch you have a nigga rob is a whack bitch. When you are in a strip club, you show your pussy, you get compensated. When you fuck a nigga, you get compensated. Anything beyond that, bitch, me and you got nothing in fucking common. And I think that shit was corny. And when I heard it, I felt disgusted. I wasn't surprised though. Period. I wasn't surprised. Fuck out of here. I, Were you I was surprised? Was, I mean, she's been a rat, but even for her to say it, and you saying it with confidence, bitch, that's some shit you take to the grave. I done done some shit that I'm not gonna fucking speak about. The fact that she's like, and I tried to get money, because really, if you listen to the clip, she's talking about, y'all don't know what I've been through to get to where the fuck I'm at. Uh -huh. 
My nigga, that's like you saying, I fucking killed some kids because I needed to, like, that shit's not, not everything you do to get money is respectable. So how the fuck you on the thing talking about, well, I had to do what I had to do. Bitch, you're a fucking rat. That shit's whack and corny as fuck. And I don't know how niggas is sitting here looking past it because her music is hit. Because it's normal. That shit's whack. I mean, I'm not, I don't I'm run not. with bitches like that. I don't fuck with bitches like See, that. See, you as a female, you, you offended by it because you said, you like, yo, that's some dirty bitch shit. It, it is some dirty bitch shit, but... On the other hand, as a man, we've been through this shit so much that we, that's like normal. Y'all should have to go that's through like, that, though, That's normal right? for us. You like, should be able to lay like, with a bitch and not feel like she about to do like, no rap like, bullshit. I, I, I right. never laid That's like a nigga putting his hands in my face. It's like, okay, you're corny. Somebody should run down on you for that. Yo. Somebody should dead run down on her for that. We got shit. I don't respect it. And I like Cardi B. Y'all know I'm a Cardi B fucking fan. But that shit made me go, it's just what, bitch, it's we just different. The life I never. And I and remember. Shit. Fuck out of here. Just like bitches that sleep on air beds but won't fuck you unless you in a king. But you sleep on the airbed, bitch. Like, this is a double nigga, standards no, that we live with. That's not even fair. It's the double standards we live with. Bitch. That shit's sick. Straight. This what, what, what these bitches, I mean, I ain't never had a new bitch and not been paying attention to where my jeans is at. Tell the concierge, yo, if anybody say they come to my apartment, turn them back. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. these bitches be on, these bitches be on a different I don't like that. Game. And then as me as a, as a good stand-up gal, I don't like when niggas have to move all scary. Like, oh my God, I don't know. It's like, who has hurt you? Bitches like that, that shit's sick. It's shit different corny. out here, but you gotta be. That video disgusted me. I think that it was corny. I think that. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Would you, Cardi, if you ever hear this shit, this is me telling you some real shit. You're in a whole nother fucking platform now. You are aligned. They align you with bitches like fucking Rihanna's and the Beyonce. Like, you are a whole new platform. Yeah. Whatever the fuck you did in your past, don't ever speak on nothing that's not presentable. And if you do speak on it, say, it. I regret it. She Have regrets. Though. Be a woman with regrets, she didn't regret it. You know she said, y'all need to respect me for what the fuck I had to do. A lot of shit is not respectable. You robbing a nigga and drugging him, that's not cute. But I know she, I'm pretty little, sure um, that she feels bad about it, so I'm not gonna rub that shit in. You didn't see the little apology thing she issued? The little thing that's all that be PR bullshit. A oh, PR you don't, think she, you don't think she really meant it? She said it with her chest. As a female, when I speak on my chest, she, I know what the fuck she I'm saying. She, if she was regretted, she, she would've said it as soon as she dropped it. She would've time. said it like this, I've been through things, y'all. I didn't do shit, I regret. You could tell by somebody's demeanor. She said it like this, yeah, I don't know what I've been through. That shit was sickening to listen to. Right, fuck it, dude. What are we gonna do, man? We can't do nothing about it, but we can move on to the next topic. So basically, this is where I'm about to go with this. <clears throat> I recently had an experience I like to address. And I like to ask my co-hosts because they know everything. These are the all-knowing ass niggas. Sex on the first night, is it acceptable? Is it okay? Do you hate a bitch? After a bitch fucks you on the first night, do you, is she like degraded like a weak slut? Or do you not care because she's a respectable bitch who doesn't give a fuck and gets whatever she wants? Like I had sex with a nigga and it was our first night and it's killing me on the inside. This so is like I, recently? This is recently on your own. We go so sad. I like that that nigga, whatever. <laughs> Honestly, what is the first, what do we mean first night? Well, let me say something for myself. For myself, I was talking to him, like, he slid in my DM. We were talking for a long time. We were talking for like months and months, oh, like FaceTimes in love. And then when I finally saw him, we were like, that's a long distance. Okay, but I can remember this one time in college where I literally met him, shook his hand, nice to meet you, first day, went out, went to a concert, we had fun, we got drunk that night, I fucked around and had sex with him. Yeah, now that's it, it haunts me to this day. Because I had literally just met that man. Yeah, now that's So let me talk first, about man. either side, because I've been through it all. That's real sex on the first. Okay, so it, when that happens, but let me tell you this, I can fuck with both of them forever after the, each time. So it doesn't matter. I would like to know, does it matter to niggas? Nah, it doesn't matter to me at all. Speaking to the, I want yeah. everybody to hear this. If we have sex on the first encounter, which has been a lot, it, I, <laughs> nah, let me stop. Josh, yeah, Jordan! I drank it. I drank it. Sorry, go ahead. I don't, I'm, a, I'm a gentleman. But nah, the women that I've had fucked on the first night, I, I don't look at them different. I look at them like grown men. They knew what they want. A lot of times, they really stroke my ego. I feel like I'm that guy. Like, oh, you want to give me some box? Like, you was eager to send the box in, and I'm not mad at you. You're an adult, so don't feel so like that. So there's no whole shit involved? Nah. Like, that doesn't come from nowhere. I mean... You fucked a slut on the first night and thought she's a slut. So say what separates the two, because there's a difference. Sluts be hard to fuck sometimes, too. Like, it should be like... Who knows anymore? What's I don't even know what's the Oh, so it's all about your character. Anymore. It's all about like, your attitude, who you Maybe are. Maybe how she's dressed. Shit be different for different niggas. Some niggas fuck a bitch the, the, the minute they meet him, that same bitch will take a nigga three years to beat. Or he might never ever beat. I, niggas say exactly. the journey as a whole, I'm like, until I beat, I can't co-sign that shit. Like, exactly. you know what I mean? Like, I, I talk to 
talked to a nigga for one whole year. We were, I mean, we're going out dating city to city, lit, taking trips, being together a whole year. And then he finally had sex with me. That happened to me twice. Yeah, you got caught by after the first 30 days. I didn't though. He fucked me for a whole year. This happened on two different separate occasions, two different men. And I swear for a whole year, and then we finally had sex. Yeah. And one of them, the night we had sex, we decided to be in a relationship. You know who you are. But the other one, I mean, um, we kept him? talking. No, we just kept talking. Like, it was still regular. Like, I took man long to But it's a year. Before. I don't talk to joint for a year or two before I hit before. Fact. Yeah, I ain't got right. Right. Okay, okay, so don't worry about crazy. I, mean, I done told the joints for a couple years. Like, now I've told the joints that didn't live here. Like, I might have yeah, been in the city. And he was just talking on the phone or whatever. Or how about I met you? We used to talk on the phone. And so that's why. But I would see them all the time. One of them, I even spent the night in his house over, like, in different cities and shit. Like, we did all that. And I still would not have sex. Because I was still, like, not ready. If you cross the state lines, I'm a square. I'm a square, so. I'm a square, so. So if I, if so, I cross the state lines, I gotta fuck, right? Or if she's crossing the state lines, I'm fucking. That don't happen. I'm not gonna go back there with you because we already been here before, but that's not true. That is true. Well, no. Just because I come into your city. I'm speaking for my life. That's all I can speak on. Yeah, so you're speaking on. I have never had a woman cross state lines or me cross state lines and I didn't hit it. Yeah, if we're gonna go a long distance relationship, every time you're around, I'm gonna be. What are we talking about? So, but it's not a real relationship if you're just like. Yeah, like, yeah. We long this is If I know that I'm have, I have to travel yeah, to get fucking. to you, I'm fucking. Like I'm what? Fucking. It's not even a question. I'm fucking. I'm not like I said, it's been times where we just talked on the phone and then when I finally got to you it was the first time we fucked, but we might have been talking for eight months, but when I get to you face to face, I'm busting down. Okay, that that makes sense. That's, that's, that's what I did. That's so I really like him. Yeah, maybe but I just be wondering like You can't curve on the first night, like she might like go lay up with me on some innocent shit the that's first happened. night. Then the next night is deep guts. Fuck you mean. But either way, like whenever I do beat, like we still good. Like if you take, if I take three years to beat, or if I beat the day I met you, like it, it's the same shit to me. It depends like, on so many fuck. other things that that don't even matter. Yeah, you know what you're saying? I, it's like, way too much other shit. Yeah, other shit that I'm worried about. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, this is this may be really on the spot question, but like, what's one thing that really matters more than like when we fuck? Like, what's one thing about a female or rip that lets you know I fuck with her, or she just a, I'm just trying to rag? Her nails. <laughs> Thank you, superficial free. <laughs> but nah, like I ain't gonna lie. But my shit's always lit. But continue. I be looking at bitches' nails. Like if she's a chippy, I'm like, I already see what I'm about to do. Put you a bitch with chippy nails. And let me let me back him up. Cause Sorry. let me tell y'all something. He's not being superficial. What he's being is real. Bitch, some bitches don't care. If you don't care about your nails, you don't care about your pussy. My mother always told me that you keep a woman keeps a manicure and a pedicure. Period. Because you can't handle yourself. It's one of those things that a man can see off rip that lets him know about your self-care and that's what he means it's not really the nails per se it's more so who you are as an individual so right now look at yourself look at your nails and ask yourself are my nails done do i give a fuck about myself and if you don't you should start today <laughs> i'm sorry anyway rich what do you think is something that's like a deal breaker for you like why you would not I mean, is it, are we talking about strictly physical things well, that's a, anything, anything. Oh, what's mean, the number one thing like it's a mindset I, like one conversation lets me know how i'm gonna play with you yeah. Okay, give me an example of a conversation that makes you go, bitch, go. No, like, not you. Not you, today, not tomorrow. If you sound like a dependent on somebody tax return, I'm probably not going to fuck with you. <laughs> he said like, I'm dependent. I, like, like, I'm, I'm going to just fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I have a lot of your diet, too, gets you curved. It's quick, yeah, yeah. Hold the fuck up. If you eat me, if you eat me, if you eat me, if you like a soda, bitch, I'm going to get it. Like, hey, Podcast over. Fanta, Fanta, I don't want to. I'm going home. Like I still eat McDonald's. I still I'm a soda nuggets yeah. ass bitch. I still eat pork chops because I'm from the fucking hood and I got fucking money in the bank and I still eat whatever I want. That's fine. So that don't matter. So when a nigga fuck with me, come and leave. But I'm still my order chicken tenders and fries. Yeah, but I'm still a lit rich yeah. bitch. So I don't give a fuck. Alright, that might work for all the niggas. But you just said that that was gonna cut you. Fuck out of here. Like, I ain't like, said one nigga yet that said, "Oh, you want a pork chop? No more pussy." Nah, no, fuck out of here. You're lying. You're wrong. Are you single? I'm a chicken tenders is cool. It's just the. Oh! 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 Single or not? That, that, that me. I just want to know. Like, you know I'm, I'm single because know. I don't want to settle. I don't like fucking like, fast food bitches. I don't want no fast food bitch. I'm a fast food. Bitch. I'm gonna fuck. I got mad money in the bank. I got good pussy. I got, I'm, I'm pretty as fuck. I'm clean as fuck. And I ain't chicken nuggets. Ooh, fuck out of here. That shit sounds ridiculous. You, that's the word. So, alright, alright, but check it out. You eat, you might eat that fast food shit on your own time with your homies, but you don't. When you out with a nigga, you don't be like, yo, babe, it's all good. We can put it in McDonald's. Oh, like a first date or something? Nah, just period. 
Like, Yo. maybe if you've been fucking with a nigga forever, but she, like, yeah, nigga, you gonna stress that oh, nigga. Oh, yeah, no. You gonna stress that nigga. Nah, you gonna go to Chateau Marmont, da 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 da. She not a Chateau bitch. <laughs> no other for you. I'm a Chateau bitch! Four for four, give him a couple of dollars and tell us it somewhere, it might work out. I love four for four. I bet she does, bro. He's a four for four joy. Yo, Yo, you know something sick? I have dead ass the nigga, and he was a rich nigga. Four, 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 and he didn't know what the fuck it was. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's when you go to Wendy's and you can either get a burger, nuggets, fries, and a drink for four dollars. Oh, <laughs> she know man. all of it too. I but I'll just ask a nigga to buy me diamonds and then go eat a four, four, four. So it's balanced. Yeah. <laughs> fuck out of here. Right. Man, Wendy's burger. If he call me a rat or a burger again, I'm y'all about to witness uh, me smacking the shot. Oh, he has been getting so ridiculous lately. Bring a wild out on me. Let's go to world set. Are you good on that? I'm yeah. not moving on until you say you're good on that. No, I'm not. What the fuck I said about that? That makes you feel I'm not good on that. I don't like your nip energy. My, let me explain it. Like it. Are you blood? Listen. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm not a blood. That's how you acting like. She's I Spanish. love Nipsey Hustle. period. I don't respect people who don't know who the fuck Why he is, is and are chest? trying to be extra. <laughs> Why is she Niggas clout chasing right now. Niggas is clout chasing. That's all I say. I love Nipsey. It's ain't about that nigga. I love him. Respect. Rest in peace. You are a fucking king, my nigga. I'm talking about these peons who never heard, who can't name five Nipsey as a song on that gram talking about I'm crying. They You're crying. lying. Is what the fuck you doing? I can address that. So you how should. You boys, how you boys tell us somebody else to mourn? Everybody process. You're sick. Yo. She's Everybody grief. process grief differently. Next time, but I, people definitely care caring more about things so, that they get killed so, than they do their own. So let me ask you this. Thank you, Rich. So are they dragging the visuals? That's just... <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Like the visuals is going on? I don't think niggas is a sad thing. Nah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is that what she's holding? That's an inside joke. He's trying to find it. I don't know. I'm not being funny. I respect the visuals. I'm not even told. Niggas is dragging it, bro. I don't think niggas is dragging it. So niggas is dragging the visuals. I think the visuals are super appropriate for the people that really do care. The family, the neighborhood, people who have been affected by it. You shouldn't be doing this. That's what you're saying. Nah, I'm asking you. So the niggas are eight miles. I'm about to go. I mean, exactly. Niggas so, niggas don't even go visit. Nah, I mean, if I'm just if you guys, I'm asking questions. I'm I need to see how my, my you you can my calls feel. You can appreciate it. Is what it is. That, no. Like, dragging the Some of these niggas just dragging it though. That's, fuck out of here. If you can't name your single songs, shut the fuck up being on your story all day. Like it. they might they they don't have to they might know the songs, but they like your friend said, Jenna. She likes the fact that how she treated, how he treated Lauren London. And yeah, that was nice. And that, and that was admirable for her. She did. You know what I mean? Okay. Every girl might not know Victory Lab or Mailbox Money, but they might, they know Lauren London and they know that they're together and they like how he moves for her. Well, that's not what I'm so talking about. So you can about. be a fan of it. I'm not talking yeah. about that. Yeah. I'm talking about people who are acting like they're really hurt. Okay, can we move along? Cause I just, What's my favorite segment? Let's just move here. on to the next segment. Favorite segment of the fucking day. You got it. Let's do it. Who on first? Who I'm going first. first. I'm all set on Kayla. Oh shit. I just want to throw that. I haven't really been feeling it. And one thing about it, I don't got nothing but fucking time, baby. She fronted on Spike Lee. Fronted. She fronted on Nipsey. No, I didn't. And, the, and I'm not going for it. What I'm just all set on her. What else? Neighborhood Nip. I don't give up. I don't like Spike Lee. My nigga, you can go set on that. She tried to tell me. Spike Lee? Is it better than Nasty Jordan Peele? You shit me? Like, get out of school. Us was okay. We're not gonna drag it. He had two joints. Spike Lee, School Days, Malcolm X. I really should just stop at Malcolm X. Period. I don't even gotta go on. He got game, clockers, he got joints. The fact that you even had the audacity, then she tried to downplay in cinematography, like, oh, he did a little trick, but he pull up behind and follow you up the block. That shit's fire. Spike Lee is a legend, he's an icon. I'm not feeling Kayla. I'm all set on Miss Martinez, and that's it. Damn. Give him a round of a raggedy ass fucking applause. Thank you, Free, for saying that. Get off your chest. I don't give a fuck. Oh I said I don't fucking like Spike Lee shit. I don't give a fuck. It is what it is. I'm millennial. I'm not a fan of You said of Jordan Peele was better. I respect Jordan Peele. You know why? Because I respect nerds. I think he's intuitive. No, 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 no. I think he's a writer. I think he, I think he's on another Stand higher level. I'm said. here for what's woke. Now you're here for what's woke. I'm standing by what I said. I don't give a fuck I about just, Spike Lee I today. Just, let the record stand that I, I just really, really, really appreciate the fact that Jordan Peele is making major movies with black people as the leader and and, chill, and the supporting roles and his his, sto his storylines and his topics is non-traditional like he, he he's stepping outside of a creative he, box yeah, he's stepping and not only that he's doing it with purpose he's doing it with purpose white boys can't jump whatever fuck that was cool 
but what is he doing for the culture? Not that he's not doing for is the culture. Is that a spike joint? It's more than just niggas with guns. White man can't jump some shit. Right more than niggas All I'm saying guns. is that I do think that Jordan Peele has a little bit more of a, a movement behind him, so it's more respectable to me. And this is on a very serious note. I respect anything that has purpose. Anything with purpose in life. People with purpose mean something to me. Spike got purpose. I'm not saying I think he's a I think he has a cute little creative mind, cute little creative mind, and I think a lot of these movies happen to be good for the community. That's cool. Okay. I'm talking yeah, about a movement for black people because right now black people are oppressed as fuck. Jordan Peele got a white wife. Over time with that. Yeah. That's fine, sweetheart. And biracial. That's fine, sweetheart. My point is this: I feel like he's doing something for everybody, and I respect it. Put black in some movies. It's just me. It's just me. I've seen Spike Lee movies. My father would probably just. My father really likes Spike Lee. He won't call you a curse. I'm ready for my world set, B. Take it off. You know what I mean? I'm all set on Cameron. You know what I mean? Cameron is wilder lately. What? I'm all set on Cam right now. What did Cameron do? I want to hear about this. Killer Cam has his age and disgusting. He's damn near 50. He just dropped a video called Choppers. He's 50? He, he, he's 40 something. Oh, okay. He's up there in age. He's pushing 50. He just dropped a video called Choppers. He's dancing around with a bunch of niggas in the video with big guns. He looks like Chief Keef. Choppers going up. NLE Choppo, young, what's the, whatever young new murder niggas out. Like, that's what Killer Cam is looking like now. He's bugging. Cam, you gotta get your your aura. Up. Let's show a clip. Play Let's show a clip of uh, Cameron's new video. Of this one. Let's see it. Put up oodles and noodles. Wooly and crack, they had in the back. I'm not what you used to. Don't let them push you. Q and Bishop juice you. Forgot who I am. Well, let me reintroduce you. I'm Mr. Rogers. Switch up in the evening gear. You supposed to be a godfather, big homie, kingpin status type dude at least. At, at the very least, in your videos and your image you portray, son, at this age of your life, chill. Like, don't dance around with the choppers and all that dumb shit. Nick, Please. but it's hard to keep Please. up. Wait, as you get yeah, older, sorry. like, let's think about, like, Master P. I love Master P. I'm a little Romeo fan. I'm a P. Miller fan. But, like, it's hard. When you get older like that, it's hard to keep up with what's young and what's lit. So whatever he was doing back then, he's only trying to keep up with the trends, but it's hard when you're not in that... You know, you know, like our nephews might teach us a dance. We don't fucking know. Like we're just getting yeah. older, so I feel like it's a little bit more of that. He might still have to be real nigga in his heart, you but it's hard to feel with trends. You, you know? gotta learn how to age gracefully. I haven't when, seen this video you, you speak you come, of though. When you come to a certain age in your life, you have to let trends go and and be a classic. Like, yeah, you know I mean, I'm in my own lane. I'm a classic. Like, I'm my shit don't change. My shit's That's hard. Old, you That's hard. You can't be out here stretching, reaching for what little kids are doing when you're pushing fifty. Man, come on, be. We gotta do better, Cam. All set on you, B. Bring, bring back my respect. Oh yeah, and I forgot that weirdo shit you did, Cam. On live, you had a fucking wig on, son. I remember that, that shit was weird, bro. You was had he being great... funny? I don't give a fuck if it was funny or what, man. Nigga had a great wig on, like a long joint, like a uh, silky motherfucker, like. Niggas is getting weird, man. And I love Dipset, so please don't ruin that for me. Hey, man. I've been a stupid ass. Why can't I find his Instagram? All right, well, what do you all set on, Kayla? Um. I love Dipset and I still respect Dipset, so I just really appreciate that. I'm mad at him today because he came for me. But anyways, I'm all set on this situation that I, I just recently heard about before the show started. Um, there was a Muslim man that was gunned down in Portland, Oregon. And to my knowledge, he was um, dating a white woman. He came into her home and he was murdered by her white brother. And that's just very upsetting because I guess I'm just all set on the fact that we as a people are moving forward. Like, there, I don't feel no forward movements. Like, it's just sick. And I get that, you know, we come from um, oppressors and we come from, like, this energy where everybody just wants to just fucking be racist and ain't shit. But come on, guys. Like, it's fucked up. I couldn't even imagine, like, me bringing a white boy home and my brother, even on the other side, my brother, like, gunning him down because he felt like, why are you fucking with this cracker? Like... It's just kind of getting ridiculous, and it just hurts my feelings. Mm. So that's tragic. I, it's yeah. so tragic. Like when you take, imagine that man got up that morning. He tried to impress her. He put on his shit. He showed up at her house. He was being, resi you know, pre respectable. And he came through, and he got killed off the strength of the fact of his, I don't know, if it was his religious background, his complexion. I don't know. But either way, it's just like, damn, what a world we live in. And that was just really fucking upsetting to I me. I think that they, her brother was in the army. I think they said like he known, like he joined the army in order to murder Muslims, like. He like some like crazy like radical Muslim hater or whatever. Alright, that's so sad story. <laughs>
That nigga freed us, not kid. Nah, no, it was just, it's fucked up. Mm -hmm. I tried. No, I'm not trying to save it. Let's no. go to the book of the week. <laughs> Let's go to the book of the week. Yeah, yeah, not, see. We don't respect life anymore. B. We don't. She doesn't. She doesn't respect life. I, I really just feel like we, as a whole, as a humanity, we, like, we, we don't. But you know what's going on? Let me, let me take it somewhere a little bit deeper. We're so accustomed to death, which is not a bad thing because death is among us. Like one day we're all going to be dead. So it's like, why even sit here and be like, oh my God, someone died. We don't even, we're so numb to it, which may just be like a natural survival, home safety and reaction, which I have to respect that too. But it is unfortunate. Like when people die, it's almost like a conversation and we all move on. It's really yeah. interesting if you think about it like that, but. Yeah. All right, fuck it. Moving Book along. Of the week. My favorite segment, Book, Book of the, of the week. week. What she got for So me? you guys looked up because it's week, we have two books. Oh shit. Um, one of them is how to talk so people will listen by Steve Brown, and the other one is How to Listen So People Will Talk. So, you know, I was a Who's community... Who's that by? Um, that is by uh, Becky Harlan. Gotcha. Um, so, I was a communications major in college, as you all know, so I'm really good with, like, um, communicating. And I think that this is so... Y'all good? I didn't say anything. <laughs> I heard giggles. Uh, what? Anyway. <laughs> Okay, sorry. So anyway, to move right along, because we gotta finish this. Um, good, good conversation. It teaches you how to listen. And listen, when you hear somebody speaking, it's different when you're listening and, and take in what it is that they're saying. So it's different when you're having a conversation and you're trying to respond with yourself and be like, yeah, I know that, as opposed to actually like being intuitive, understanding, and, and listening to what that person is trying to give you. And also, how to talk to make people around you feel comfortable enough to give you more information. If you think about it, like, everything that you know, you know. So why not live life to obtain more knowledge as opposed to pouring out your own. So don't talk, be more of a listener. And I think this really just taught me that like, speak so people will want to give you more information. I think that's key. So these are my twins, I love them so much. Anyone who's interested in communication should read them. That is it, we are all set. Thank you guys for being here, thank subscribe, you guys for tuning in. Like, love, comment, like, subscribe. Comment, and if you love us, you can send us some shit where we're gonna wear your shit. Facts. And um, whatever you want to put up on our wall, we got y'all to support black business. All thank you day. for tuning in and good night. Thank you.